Hello, disgraced basement Ronin. I am back with yet another 3D printed muzzle loading Nerf blaster. And you can build one yourself if you have a 3D printer, a pile of screws, the spring from a click pen, and a bunch of rubber bands. But if you want more power, you can also assemble it with the spring and plunger assembly from a Nerf Caliburn. Check the link in the description for files and production partners. So what is this thing? Well, it's a Japanese matchlock. What's a matchlock? Matchlocks are the first point and click blasters in history. Before their invention in the 1400s, the only way to use a gunpowder weapon was with a match awkwardly held in one hand. By using a trigger and spring, we can easily snap the match right into the powder, leading us into Japan in the 1500s. Thanks to the Chinese, the Japanese were familiar with gunpowder, but the arrival of Portuguese traders with spring-loaded sticks got them extra enthusiastic about the concept. But enough history lessons, let's talk about the toy we have here. So this is kind of a chipified version of a Tatsuki Ryu school of gunnery? Who knows how to pronounce that? Not much written in English about that particular style, though I did think it looked cool. Probably most distinctive for having this kind of squared front end and this very sort of clipped back part. So let's talk features for this particular toy. We do have at least a semi-functional lock mechanism. We have a pan that flips open and out and of course that trigger mechanism. Cute little inlays on the other side. So how does it shoot? Let's start with the elastic version. We're gonna start with five rubber bands in this guy, and we're gonna start with the rival bowls as well. Okay, looking like 80 to 90 FPS with the rival balls. That's a good start. How about some foam darts? Well, looks like the darts are performing about the same in the low 80s. So that's the elastic blaster. Let's spice things up with the spring powered one and some rival balls. Two shots at around about 110, 115 each. It may not seem like much, the extra 30 FPS, but keep in mind that's when you start needing eye protection. And in my last blasters, which use the same mechanism and power, that gets around 20 meters plus of distance. That said, let's look at the power foam darts and the spring loaded blaster. Keep in mind with this assembly, you're gonna have to swap a few parts out to switch between rival bowls and darts. Have to be careful not to press the darts in too hard, or they can get into the plunger mechanism, though that won't stop you shooting them. A little bit stronger than the rival bowls, but I was kind of expecting double bat. Maybe let's grease the barrel a second. Hey, pretty good. 200 FPS, more like it. And just to confirm, let's use a shorter dart for this next shot, which has a little bit better ballistics. This is a worker gen free, I think. Okay, that last shot got us to 220 FPS, which is plenty respectable for a muzzle loading nerf blaster. Remember, much past uh, 90 FPS, you do kind of want to be playing with goggles. Okay, while we have it on the table, why don't we take a look inside to see how it works. So, at least for maintenance purposes, for the spring-based one, only need to really undo three parts. So we've got hidden behind the pan cover of this screw, and these two. <laughs> yeah, probably should have taken the ramrod out first before doing that. Ah, I didn't flatten one end, so it kind of dug into plastic. That's fine. Don't usually need to get that out. Okay. So that gives you access to the plunger tube. And then 
Just removing this screw. take out the whole internals. So the plunger base system, yeah, you probably recognize this if you're familiar with 3D printed Nerf designs. This is pretty much identical to how it Indra works. Um, but this only works for the darts. We want to swap to rival bowls, take off this brass barrel. We're going to use <laughs> this 3D printed barrel. No matter how hard I tried, I could not find a reliable piece of tubing that would work as good as just a free printed barrel. As you can see, this is mostly M5 screws, which are, you can get from any hardware store around the world, but this stuff, so in particular, this K26 spring, this polycarbonate tubing, which if you check my instruction files, I get the size for, and this brass tube, you might need to go to a Nerf specialty for, store for. I think this is 9 sixteenths uh, of an inch um, brass tubing. This is actually, most hobby stores do this. This is, I think, usually used in air, like model airplanes and stuff like that. But this particular spring and the other kinds of springs that will fit in there tend to be a bit more specialized. Most sort of Nerf hobby stores will have it. And the plastic tubing and the O-rings they'll typically have as well because this is a very standard size that's used in the hobby. I believe uh, if you're in Europe, you might find that harder to source, although some people have had success. I will try and provide links in the instructions where possible. Uh, you can also mess around. This area will actually fit a 40 millimeter OD tube, and with slightly larger O-rings, you should still be able to make this work. Okay, with that out of the way, why don't we take a quick look at how the elastic band version works? So the version of this that uses elastic bands is pretty much structured the same way. One of the big pieces of feedback I got about my previous designs was the desire to use the same barrel sort of exterior with different mechanisms, because honestly, it's just a lot easier to get some rubber bands than a bunch of really specific tubing sizes. So, then, again, take the ramrod off before you do this. That gives you an idea what the elastic mechanism looks like. So. You can see here a bunch of standard office store rubber bands with just a big plastic rod that it's going to drive into the darts, which are going to seat up here. Same with the bowls. Now it's worth noting these rubber bands, I, I put in about five here. I think you can fit up to seven of this style. You try out different things to see what gives you better results. But worth noting, these only tend to last between 100 to 150 shots before they start breaking. Um, and what you'll tend to find is rather than the mole snapping, say one will snap and then another 20 shots later. So, you know, given this takes them like 20 seconds to load, you'll find that, you know, over a couple days of intensive play, it'll be fine. But you will occasionally have to go in there and replace those. Honestly, with the spring one, you often have to oil it just as much. So it's not that big a difference. Might as well give you a quick glimpse of the catch mechanism. Now, this is the exact same between the spring-based and the elastic band-driven version of this. So using some big, fat 3D printed screws. Those should be fine. These are scaled up so that they'll print nicely. So you really custom size. So first off, Just slap in both cases the plunger tube and or the sled will slide back there and catch in here. Pulled down by that. But the trigger also pulls on this lever. So what we have here is essentially a toy version of a historical match lock mechanism. So this is the simplest version of this I could find out there. Um, just a big mainspring that drives this guy too full when I pull on that sear. And of course you got our little pan mechanism that's gonna hit on. Okay, pretty much it for the internals. I'm gonna put this back together quickly and we'll finish up. Now, my next project is gonna be some kind of volley blaster. So don't forget to like and subscribe so you can keep track of the musket mayhem. Neat. 
Have fun out there.